In this video, we're going to talk about routing between different VLANs. So we know that VLANs actually are ports which are totally or logically isolated ports that belong to the same physical switch. And this, these ports are uh, logically isolated from each other. So computers which are connected to ports in VLAN 100 cannot communicate with, uh, directly with computers that belong to VLAN 200, although they are connected to the same switch. For example, in this diagram, host 1 can talk to host 2 because they are member of the same VLAN, VLAN 100, from port 1 to 9. Uh, port host 3 cannot talk, can talk to host 4 because they belong to VLAN 200 from port 10 to 11 to 19. However, host 1 cannot talk to host 3 because they are on different VLANs. So the solution for that is to establish routing, to have routing. So a router is a device that we use in order to allow two devices connected to different VLANs to communicate. So communication between different VLANs is like communication between different networks totally isolated from each other. So we need a router in order to establish that kind of communication. So what we do here, uh, I will go to uh, switch, the first switch or switch one. Uh, I will go to port or interface gigabit zero slash two. And this interface, I will configure it as a trank port. It should be in a trank mode. Okay, this is a trank mode. Okay, so I will save this configuration. So the first thing now, the second thing, I will go to the router, and this router is not configured yet. So what I will do? So the first thing I will uh, I will change the name from the default to RT. Okay, so this is the name of the router. The second thing I will go to the gigabit interface zero slash zero slash zero. Now this interface, what I do? I will. Uh, I bring it up, so I can bring it up like this, and uh, once it is brought up, I create sub interface, interface gigabit zero slash zero slash zero. Let's say I will name it VLAN one. We can put any number, but just we put 100. I put 100 just to mention that this sub interface follows VLAN 100. So once I configure this, I assign IP address to the sub interface gigabit zero slash zero slash zero dot 100 so the ip address is 172.16.0.200 followed by subnet mask which should be uh, subnet mask in this case in this case it should be slash 24 so it is 255.255.255.0 right and before that i can i have to specify the encapsulation dot one q and here I have to put the tag which should be the VLAN ID 100. So in this case it's 100. So I put the IP address. From here I can go, I can create another sub interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 200. I will use the number 200 to indicate that this sub interface goes with VLAN 200. And then I will uh, do this, I will use this command encapsulation dot 1q. I will change the tag here to 200 to match VLAN 200, all frames coming from VLAN 200. And then I can assign the IP address, which should be 172.31.0.250. 31.0.250, okay, and here we are. So let's just go back again and check our the configuration of the gigabit interface, zero slash zero. So this interface, we should not apply any or assign any IP address to the main interface. So the physical interface does not have any IP address. So the most important thing is that it should be enabled by tapping the command no shutdown. After that, you can configure the sub interfaces uh, by naming them using this format, dot, dot, and then follow it by a tag like 100. You can put any number. In fact, you don't have to use the number relevant or uh, the number of your VLAN or VLAN tag, but you can put any number. So in this case, as a common practice, we can use 100 just to indicate that this is this, this subnet is related to VLAN 100 and then you specify the encapsulation of the tranking protocol this tranking protocol and then dot one q 100 which means that all frames coming from VLAN 100 will be treated will be received by this sub interface uh, and then we assign the IP address that follows the network for the, the network address assigned to VLAN 100 172.16.0 and then here the host address same story with the second subnet uh, sub uh, interface. 
uh, gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 200 200 means simply that this sub interface goes with VLAN 200 uh, here we specify the tracking protocol dot 1Q and the TAC 200 means that this uh, sub interface will receive all frames generated coming from VLAN 200 from those hosts connected to VLAN 200 and then we can assign the IP address like this this, uh, this is the IP address that, assi that is assigned to the sub uh, interface now as you notice here these IP addresses that we assign to this sub interface would be simply would be considered as default gateway for all hosts in VLAN 100 so all hosts in VLAN 100 will use this IP, this IP address as their default gateway IP address all devices connected to VLAN 200 will use this IP address as their default gateway IP address now um, after that I configured host 1 let's say host 1 is configured with IP address subnet mask default gateway I have done this before previously and same thing with host 2 host 2 also is configured with IP address subnet mask default gateway IP address we can check same story with host 3 default gateway is here host 4 same story you can see default gateway of course we should not forget the servers because servers are very important to be configured correctly in order to be reachable uh, this is with the web server 1 and this will be with web server 2 so all these are reachable now what I do now I go to host 1 and from host 1 I will try ping I will ping the um, host 3 what is the IP address of host 3 it's 172.31.0.1 so let's see if this works okay so it will take some time maybe and then we have a reply okay so everything works fine in order to double check and know exactly to uh, test this and know exactly that the traffic is going through the router we can use a trace route trace route and 172.31.0.1 so we can see that uh, the first path between host 1 and host 3 is in fact default gateway and then host 3 or the destination itself uh, I can do this with any other device on uh, VLAN 200 let's say host 4 whose IP address is 172.31.0.2 so this is the IP address here so the first one is default gateway then the target itself and I can also trace route to the web server 2 from host 1 okay web server 2 which means 150 172.31.0.150 and it looks like everything is working fine so we have established communication between hosts on different VLANs using router and stick technique now uh, the problem is that this technique it works good if you have few VLANs however if you have a large number of VLANs this technique of using router um, on stick is not scalable is not scalable in the sense that all traffic between different VLANs will be using this this link here this this trunk and this trunk here and this interface will become like a bottleneck certain stage if the traffic is um, very heavy it will become like a bottleneck so this technique is not really that uh, is not really considered uh, appropriate in some situation it doesn't scale well so there are other uh, techniques that are, that are used instead of router and stick however router and stick is good if number of VLANs is small and the traffic is light uh, okay so for example from host one I can access uh, first the web server 1 172.16.0.100 okay so connectivity is there because it, uh, they are on the same uh, VLAN but if I want to access the web server 2 which is on a different VLAN okay so we can do the same thing here see or oh, let's say uh, let me just write the IP address of web server 2 okay so it works so everything works fine now let's do something very interesting here uh, I'm going to um, go to simulation mode in packet tracer simulation mode I will pick simple PDU okay I put it on host 1 and uh, the destination will be web server 2 now let's see how the traffic is going to move between host 1 and web server 2 so first there is an ICMP packet which is generated by host 1 in green color this ICMP packet will go to the router so of course it will be received by the uh, sub interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 200 dot 100 sorry because this is a sub interface which is related to VLAN 100 
After that, it's routed through the sub-interface gigabit 000 slash 300, and then it moves through VLAN 2. It goes through the trunk, and the trunk will simply uh, send it through another trunk between the two switches, okay? The two switches, and then it will go to the destination, which is Web Server 2. Now, this is the ICMP core request. Let's see the ICMP core reply. It shows exactly the path which is going to be followed by the packet in order to reach the sender of the ICMP eco reply. So you see here all the traffic is going through the router. So the router is a device which is going to be used in order to establish communication between different between hosts on devices connected to different VLANs. And in this uh, demo, we have used router and stick. Thank you for viewing this video.